Good morning. Happy Monday. I hope everybody's off to a wonderful start for the week. Um, it's definitely uh, <clears throat> it's definitely starting to become a little bit more of a normal routine to just get up and get these going. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I hope everybody had a good weekend. And if it was nice where you were, that you were able to go out and get some fresh air and get some exercise. I was able to. It was so nice. It was so great. So um, just trying to just keep on keeping on, right? So um, just want to kind of give everybody a few minutes to jump on. Hello for, to the Instagrammers. Hello to the Facebookers. Um, <clears throat> we're making a fruit pizza today. And uh, a great one for if you've got, you know, the, the kids want to kind of jump in and do stuff. Um, this is a great one for them to do, and, um, and it's a little bit different than what you would normally do, you know, with a cupcake or cookies or whatever like that. So, um, so we're just going to have a little bit of fun. A um, little bit of homework, things to get, um, to get on my Instagram. Oh, so there you are. Okay. Sorry, connection was a little bit bad, but we're back. Uh, a little bit of homework for the week. I posted all the recipes for the week in my stories in both Facebook and in Instagram, and I will continue to post those throughout the week so, as they, you know, recycle through. So, um, today we're doing a fruit pizza. Tomorrow we're going to do a one bowl banana bread. So this one is a great one to do with, um, with littles because you just stir. Um, you add the stuff, you mash bananas in, all that kind of stuff. So it's a great one to do for them. And, um, also, you want to make sure you have some fairly ripe bananas, the ones that have lots and lots and lots of brown spots on and are fairly soft. Honestly, the more brown spots, softer, the better, because that will bring out much more of that banana flavor. Um, if you've got bananas that are fairly firm, it, you're not going to have as strong of a banana flavor, and they're, they're going to be harder to mash. So if you can get your hands on some old bananas, not old, but, you know, ripened bananas, then um, definitely jump on that. So tomorrow's banana bread. Um, Wednesday is scone day. Yay! Uh, we're going to do a savory scone, which technically is a biscuit, but we're going to do, a, it's going to be a scone for scone day purposes. Um, it's going to be a bacon, cheddar, and chive scone. Now, again, if, you know, given situation right now with all that's going on with ingredients and stuff, if you can't find chives, you can substitute green onions or scallions. If you can't find one of those, then you can omit it. Um, same with bacon. If you're not a bacon person, you can keep the bacon out. Cheddar, sky, cheddar chive scones are awesome by themselves. So you can play with the um, ingredients the way that I've given it to you that fits what's best for you. So um, Thursday, pizza day, um, pizza dough day rather. So I put on there that you need yeast. So if you need to get, they sell them in, I think, packs of three yeast packets um, in the baking section. That's perfectly fine. If you have a jar of yeast, that's what I use because I make bread fairly frequently. But, um, but if you, you want to get, I mean, you can't buy it by the individual anyway, but the, the recipe calls for, I believe it's a tablespoon, and each one of those packets is um, two and a quarter teaspoons. So you'll need two packets to make that work for the pizza dough, okay? And then, um, and then obviously, like, you know, you have to let it rise and all that, but I'm going to have some already risen and show you how you can flatten it out and, and make your pizza dough and all that kind of stuff. And then, obviously, whatever toppings you want, you can either have it for that lunch or dinner. So you can do that. You can watch the video in the morning, see what I've got going on, and then you can um, finish it later and watch the video again if you need to. And then Friday, we're going to finish the week with uh, clean out your pantry granola. How many people, and I include myself in this, always have like stash upon stash upon stash of little bit of whatever ingredients that you, you know, keep just in case you might need it for something else and then it gets buried and you never do it. So granola is an awesome way to kind of get through a few of your, uh, you know, any dried uh, nuts, I'm sorry, dried berries, um, dried fruit, nuts chocolate chips, coconut, whatever you have that you want to add to uh, granola, it's perfect. So it's kind of the clean your pantry out thing. So we're going to get started. We're going to make a sugar cookie pizza, fruit pizza. So I have a log o sugar cookie dough, all right? 
and you want to take. And if you've got the package that's got like the pre thingies, that's fine too. But um, the pre portioned, I guess that's what that is pre portioned cookies, um, that's fine too. Because what we're going to do is we're basically just going to take half of the dough per pizza. So do that. So you've got, got a log, right? And then I'm just going to take my bench scraper, but you can also just break it if you want to take a knife, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and you're just going to cut it and make two equal portions. That's about right, I'd say. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. What's more, what's more important is just making sure that when you flatten it, that it has, it's more even when you bake it. So, um, preheat your oven to 350 if you haven't already. Um, I've got two baking pans because you're going to be making two pizzas out of this. So, um, I will demo what to do. If you um, have parchment paper, feel free to lay that down because it's actually easier to scrape up the cookie off the pan when you, if with parchment. If you don't, you can use a little bit of cooking spray, which I'm actually going to do for this one. So I did I did a batch earlier just to so I can demo making the pizza part. So I need to, to redo that. So um, what we're gonna do is we are going to smash this down into a round six inch ish pizza dough, right? I tried it with a um, rolling pin and it didn't even matter that I put powdered sugar on it and stuff, it still got sticky. And honestly, it, it's just as quick to just take your hand and smash it, okay? So, um, and the dough is fairly sticky, but it will come up. So, so far that's what I've got. It's not gonna be a perfectly round when you press it, but when it bakes, it will bake up a little bit rounder. So that's kind of cool. So, and then if it does kind of break off as you're, as you're flattening it, just push it back together because it's got enough butter and softness in there to kind of mix up. So, so, and then I kind of just, kind of just round it up a little because I'm kind of OCD when I think of pizza, but it's okay if you don't. If you wanted a rectangular pizza, by all means make it a rectangular pizza. Because like I said, when it bakes, it's actually gonna kind of get a little bit bigger. So that's what I got for this one, okay? All right, so that's that one. Do this one. Again, you just kind of take your heel of your hand and just push it out. And then kind of spin it around, go around. And then you just kind of want to smooth it out a little bit. I try to, I try to round it out a little, but it tends to be more rectangular. Okay. So you just want to make sure that it's fairly, you know, whatever thickness you have it, it that it's even. In the thickness all the way around. Okay? Okay. Good? Good? Okay, so you're gonna pop these in the oven for about 15 ish minutes. You might wanna check on them about halfway through, maybe you have to rotate them. Um, <clears throat> they're gonna be a little soft in the middle, but you want them to be kind of a, a golden brown. And then they're going to look like this. Okay? So see how. I don't want to handle these too much because I don't want them to break. But if you look at how small that is, and that, that gets bigger. So no fears on that, okay? So I, like I said, I baked off a couple this morning so that we could do this together. And now we're going to make our yogurt topping. Um, some people use sour cream. Some people use cream cheese. In the interest of trying to make this, a, you know, let ourselves feel a little bit better about what we're making and eating, um, we're going to do a little bit of yogurt with, okay, we add sugar to it, but at least it's yogurt and not like sour cream, right? Or cream cheese, right? So I actually found a couple of them. Um, you can do standard vanilla if you want, and that is, that is completely good. 
Um, I love like strawberry yogurt and I think like the pink underneath it is really pretty because I'm an aesthetics person. But I also found a toasted coconut vanilla. So I'm probably going to do a little bit of each, um, not in the demo, but with the other two and see which one I like. Because, you know, I've got a little bit of tropical fruit here and, you know, we're just going to, we're just going to see what we, what it, what it tastes like. And you might find a new flavor profile that you really like. So, so, but for this, I'll do the uh, strawberry so that you can kind of see the pink and that way you can see a little bit of the color. So, um, so you add, and this can be, you can use Greek yogurt. You could use regular yogurt. If you just want to do the old fashioned way, it's cream cheese and I believe sour cream mixed together with some powdered sugar and all that. But, you know, like I said, at least this way we can justify it a little bit more with the yogurt. So, okay, so I've got my container of yogurt and now I'm going to add about a half a cup of sugar. I'm not going to add all of it at once, just kind of, just kind of, oops, well, maybe I got to add a little bit more than I anticipated. That's okay. And then you're just going to mix it up until it gets all absorbed. And then I forgot to mention, like, obviously if you have fruit that needs to be sliced, then you want to slice that. Um, I have, I was able to score a pretty good looking um, pineapple and uh, I got some oranges. Unfortunately, my mango did not ripen soon enough, so I couldn't use that, but I did find some berries. You can use whatever fruit you want. You could use, a, you know, 10 different kinds of fruit. You can use one different kind of fruit. You can do somewhere in the middle. Um, and um, just make sure that, you know, you slice up your, if you've got like a pineapple or a banana or something like that, that you can, you obviously want to slice that up a little bit. So, okay, so this is what we got. Okay, so now add just a little bit more powdered sugar and this adds a little bit of volume as well to the yogurt. Um, so, okay, kind of want to stir it around until like I see a little bit of um, clumps, tiny clumps of powdered sugar. So you just want to kind of stir it till those clumps disappear. They'll dissolve, but you know, the more you get out of it when you stir, then, then the smoother it is when you put it on your cookie. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this on my cookie. And I'm gonna spread it to about a half an inch. A little too much here, so scoop a little bit of it out. So about a half an inch out, <clears throat> because as you put your fruit on, it's going to push more out, okay? Okay. So that's what I have, okay? The sauce of the pizza, if you will. Okay, so like I said, I have some pineapple here. Some pineapple slices. I have some orange segments and I have blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. So, like I said, I'm a color person because you know I just like to make things colorful. So, what I think I'm going to do is I've got basically I have a blackberry and a blueberry that are right, they're very similar in color. So, I want to add, I miss what's in the bowl yogurt. Yeah, so it's um. Greek yogurt, I use strawberry with um, like a container with a little bit of um, up to a half a cup of sugar, powdered sugar. Um, so anyway, so like, right, without the blueberries and the, or without the raspberries, it's just blue and black, and then you add that, and that adds a nice pop of color. Then you can add, you know, pineapple, and that adds like a brilliant yellow. But now like orange and pineapple are kind of in the similar color vein. So you kind of want to just spread these things out to make them, um, you know, like a variety of colors. So I am going to take some pineapple and I'm going to lay it on the outside. I'm going to work on from the outside in. You can work from the inside out, whatever you prefer. This is just how I'm doing it. So I'm going to take these and I'm just going to lay them 
kind of shingle them on top of each other. And, you know, another, another fruit that would be really good with this in terms of color is uh, kiwi. And the brilliant green of kiwi is awesome. My husband's allergic to kiwi, so I never get it. So I kind of like my husband and I don't want to, you know, kill him. So um, stay safe. Yes, you too, Jackie. Stay safe. I'm, I'm inside. I'm doing what they tell me. All right. So I'm just going to go around and around. And do my shingle of pineapple. And then you can move on to the next fruit. I'm just trying to find equal size slices. So I sliced it fairly thin um, so that it doesn't weigh your cookie down either. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tuck another one in right here. Ah, come back, come back, come back. There we go. Okay. So this is what I, oops, this is what I have so far. Okay, well, hopefully you can see that. I don't want to tip it too much because I don't want it to fall. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a hodgepodge of berries in the middle, okay? Like I said, I have blackberries and I have raspberries. So these are fairly big berries, so they're gonna take up some space. And then I'm gonna just kind of fill in the gaps with the blueberries. Um, so here's some more raspberries. Now the thing about raspberries and all berries, especially if they're fairly ripe, they're going to kind of ooze some juices as they sit, especially if they're in contact with anything that has sugar in it, which our yogurt has sugar in it. The pineapple has sugar in it. So it's, they're going to kind of get leaky. So you don't want to let this... I mean, you can let it sit out, but it's going to eventually get to the point where it goes through the cookie and makes it soggy, okay? So don't make this and then, like, not eat it for a day or two because then it might be kind of kind of gross. So um, a few more raspberries here. Maybe a blackberry there. Okay. I'm just playing, honestly, like... I just, uh, I just kind of play with it until I think it looks good and do that. And then I'm just going to speckle them with some blueberries. And these blueberries are really dark. They're more black than blue, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to kind of fill in the gaps. <clears throat> Obviously, whatever your favorite fruits are, you can use apples, you can use, like I said, mangoes, you can use um, um, kiwi fruit, you can use bananas, you can use um, oranges, you can use, what are some other fruits? Peaches, although they're really not in season right now. Um, so, and then I'm just going to take a few of my orange segments and just kind of stick them in just wherever just to add another dimension of color so this is a fun easy treat you can make this for a dessert if you like we're taking dessert over to somebody's house for dinner obviously not right now but you know what I mean like when we all finally are free and we are going over to people's homes for cookouts and fun stuff like that, because uh, it is going to be get warm sooner or later, then you can take this out as, a, as an easy treat and, you know, it's light, it's not too heavy. So, and I'm just going to fill in a few more gaps with um, 
Actually, I think, I think I'm good with this. Well, maybe one more raspberry right here. You can, you can even cut your berries in half if you'd like, just to give them a little bit more space and fit in. And then, move this one real quick so that I can hopefully tilt this without, see? Looks like a, 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 a nice fruit tart that's on a sugar cookie. Now you can do one of two things to finish this off. You can take a little bit of honey and drizzle it. You could top it with a little bit of toasted coconut if you wanted, especially if you were using some kind of coconut yogurt. That would be really nice. But I'm actually gonna show you a little trick that the really fancy bakeries do. Um, if you take a little bit of jam or jelly or preserves and wet it down, just a little bit of water, you basically just wanna liquefy your jam jelly or preserves and then you're just going to glaze over and you're going to get that beautiful glaze color that you see in fruit tarts um, <clears throat> this is a peach jelly no peach preserves and I'm just gonna kind of glaze this over the berries and it's gonna give it such a glossy finish and I mean, you you know, most people have some kind of preserves in their in their refrigerator, so this is such an easy way to make it look even more elegant. You could just dry, you know, kind of like just just lightly, since your fruit is kind of laying on it on each other, you may not want to push too hard with it. You can just kind of lightly tap it on there. Um, you can kind of do it with the pineapple, but it's already fairly wet of a fruit, so you won't see it as much. And um, if you have a lighter color, like an apple or an apricot or a peach jam, jelly or preserves, then um, it will be more of a neutral color. So if you have lighter fruit, apples or bananas or whatever, then you will not see it. But if you have like strawberry jelly, or grape or something like that, it's obviously gonna color your fruit a little bit. So I'm just kind of, and you wanna do this basically like right before you serve it because again, this is sugar adding to your berries that are already going to, uh, the word is macerate, that's the technical term. Um, when you add sugar to it, they kind of bleed and extract their juices. So, um, so that, is my fruit pizza, right? Right, yay. So, and then I'm gonna make this other one, I'll probably do this one offline, and I'm gonna try it with the toasted coconut one because that looks really good to me. So, um, but thank you guys for joining me. Um, again, the rest of the week's recipes are on my stories on both Instagram and Facebook. So you will find uh, the recipes for tomorrow's one bowl banana bread, super easy, but super good. It will also, we are going to be doing a savory scone on Wednesday. If you cannot find the ingredients or you don't want to use all the ingredients, you do not have to. We're gonna be making pizza dough on Thursday and you'll need yeast for that. So make sure you can find some yeast. And then we're gonna clean out our cabinets and make some homemade granola on Friday so that you have some something to nosh on over the weekend that is a little bit healthier than sugar cookie fruit pizzas. So anyway, enjoy your Monday. Um, stay healthy and stay safe. If you can get some fresh air, go out and get it. Otherwise, do some baking and share your pictures with me. I want to see what you're doing. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And I will see you again tomorrow morning at 11 Eastern, whatever time frame zone you are in. I will see you at that same time. All right. Bye, guys. Take care.